Hello! And this Honda is equipped with a modern ABS system, so forget threshold braking. And just slam the pedal, and this computer will stop itself faster than you can say Fabio Quartararo. Oh! What just happened is so scandalous, I worry you'd never believe it from me. So I've baited a professional to explain. I'm Ryan Austin, retired police sergeant and major crash investigator. I don't see any skid marks. Really common in motorcycle crashes. We see 80% of riders involved in serious crashes either don't brake at all or brake with only the back brake. We've seen this through thousands of crashes over the years. It sounds ridiculous. Every motorcyclist and their manicurist knows the front brake has more stopping power and will use more of the front brake in daily use. However, when thrust into an undaily situation, an impending collision that will definitely hit, and the only question is how fast, that's when a hard wire in our toddler brain takes over. 80% of us go, Ugh, I can't pull the lever that hard or I'll endo this big wheel. So we either freeze or slam just the pedal, like a car driver. Speed's not the cause of most motorcycle crashes, it's bad braking. If everyone drove around at 200 kilometers an hour but never crashed into anything, why would I want to write tickets for that? It's not the speed, it's bad braking and lack of practice. But that's what ABS is supposed to fix, right? It's supposed to make any meatball a pro-level breaker, right? Well, first let's realize that car ABS is dissimilar. And this monstrosity has four wheels and a combined contact patch bigger than my inferiority complex. And there's one idiot pedal to engage all four brakes, yet a four-channel ABS system that articulates each individually to maximum effect. Oh, not even the soap opera stars from F1 could outbreak the car's ABS system. But on a motorcycle? Hmm. We're going to test front braking too, but the only way you'll believe the results is if we first understand what's happening inside your little puddle here. Normal use, the lever pushes hydraulic pressure which flows straight into pinching the pads. This is phase one. Emergency use, the wheel's speed sensor goes, damn, that's a slide risking amount of decel. So now the ABS pump closes its upper solenoid valve blocking off the lever and holding your braking pressure at its current level. This is phase two. Now if our wheel continues to decelerate and locks, the ABS pump opens its lower solenoid valve, allowing this release circuit to bypass brake fluid back to the reservoir. Now we're actively shedding brake pressure until the wheel accelerates again. This is phase three. Solenoid valves are incomparably fast. Your control module can cycle through all three phases in a tenth of a second, which is faster than a meatloaf can even register a slide. So how did we beat ABS? Well, slamming the rear pedal immediately puts our ABS system into phase three. That crisis mode bleeds braking pressure every 100 milliseconds. And when you subtract all those increments of no brakes, you get a shorter stop. Every Canadian is familiar with this. Drive a hunk of junk through Winterpeg and you'll quickly realize the ABS stopping distance is halfway to Moose Jaw. Motorcycles are very much like an old car on ice. And the weight transfer is so severe, there's only five, 10 pounds over the rear wheel. So the available grip before lockup is minuscule. However, the opposite is true for the front. Wisdom on threshold braking says to do a soft then hard lever pull because the tire can withstand more braking force once the weight is transferred onto it. Here we're doing exactly that. Slamming both levers with ABS on versus threshold braking with ABS off. Two things are happening. In the early moments, our ABS is forced into that third phase, lest we lock the front before it's loaded. And in the last moments, ABS is again entering crisis mode to prevent this stopping. See, humans can do stuff the computer can't. For one, we can predict that a tire will have less initial grip than when it's loaded by weight transfer, and we can make that two-stage lever pull. 
Whereas ABS is only reactive, the computer must see a slide before it can make an adjustment. Second, a human can weigh the consequences of their maneuver. If knocking up a 12 o'clock stoppy means not hitting the bus, I'll gladly do it. Whereas ABS systems always prioritize steerability, and they will sacrifice some straight line stopping distance if it means keeping the rear grounded. The unbelievable truth is that you can outbreak your ABS system. Sometimes. Uh, nope. <laughs> I can afford these mistakes in repeatable skid pad tests, but not in the once for a lifetime moment of a real world crash. And that's why ABS is a statistically proven lifesaver in daily use, and I would never recommend disabling yours, but you don't have to. We know slamming your ABS into phase three is worse than threshold breaking, but threshold breaking should only correspond to the first two phases meaning you can achieve very nearly the best stopping distance with ABS left on. Summarily, when faced with an impending, unavoidable impact, the average rider will only brake with the rear. But the average rider can learn to instinctually combine threshold brake, and the average ABS system will benefit from that versus simply slamming the levers. So don't be average, go practice, and save your life. Thank you very much to Flying Eyes and their commitment to safety that made this PSA possible. And look at all these colors. Look at all these shapes. Look how they slide easily into any helmet. The reason Flying Eyes offers all this and Lifetime Warranty is all this is because they think everyone should have a proper pair of riding glasses. Shatterproof polycarbonate in your prescription, bifocal if need be, because you can't break for the emergency if you can't see the emergency. 